So thanks everybody for joining us this morning uh, for the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. I'm Tricia Gordon and uh, I'm excited to introduce Shauna Ryan who's going to be presenting on polling in Sakai and I think that'll be a really interesting topic for most of us. Um, but first, I wanted to uh, open up the floor to anyone who would like to share announcements or any updates. I know that we have the Sakai virtual. Yeah, Wilma. Hi. <laughs> um, hey. This is Wilma. Um, I just a quick reminder that the Sakai virtual conference is coming up on November 2nd. So if you haven't registered, um, there's still plenty of time to register. And we've got a lot of great sessions lined up. So um, I encourage you to, to take part. I'll paste the, the link here into the chat so you can um, okay. have an easy way to get to it. That's great. Uh, and as a reminder also, because that date falls on one of our normal meeting times, we're not going to meet um, and instead, hopefully, we'll all be going to the virtual conference. Thanks for that. And Neil uh, let me know that he couldn't be here today, so I don't know if there were any other updates. I'm not sure. I know that work has been ongoing to release 11.2, and I believe the plan is still to do so next week. Does anybody know for sure? Okay, I, I believe that's what I saw in an email. Um, in any case, I'm sure we'll see uh, an announcement from Neil about that. Um, and I know he would encourage folks to participate in the QA. I'm sure that is one of the key activities that has to happen in order to launch that. All right, so I think we're Unless anybody else has another announcement or update, I think we're ready to dive right in. Um, and so I'm going to let Shauna introduce. Yes, thank you, Terry. I am recording. I'm already recording. Um, I'm going to let Shauna Ryan introduce herself um, and dive right into her presentation on polling and Sakai. Hey, uh, thanks, Tricia. Um, so um, I'm an instructional technologist at Providence College. I've been here for a little bit over a year. Um, so basically my role involves answering uh, questions about the LMS and conducting trainings on Sakai, uh, developing tutorials and assisting with decisions made about Sakai. And I also help with other ed tech tools on campus such as like Wikispaces and um, iClickers, which I'll be talking about today and um, online course development. Um, so since I've only been here for a little over a year, I can't be certain, but maybe if Adam or Julie are on this call, they can confirm. Um, I believe Providence College switched from Angel to Sakai three or four years ago. Um, but obviously when I came, I just inherited it. So I've been working, um, polling has been a, something that uh, we've been working on um, to try to provides, provide, but this is an opportunity for classes for various reasons. And I'm um, trying to get that data into Sakai has uh, been sometimes a challenge. And so I'm going to kind of talk today about some of the pros and cons we've come across um, with both iClicker and Reef polling. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is why we're using these systems. Um, and I imagine it's very similar at other campuses. Uh, the first thing is that sometimes it's just a live. People want these uh, clicker systems or polling audience response systems just for live polling for discussion. So in this case, they're not they don't need to record any data. So even a system like poll everywhere would be fine where you can see, uh, you know, you just have a, a feed up on the screen and you can ask a question and see how people respond. And it can be used for something like, you know, a, game, a study game, or it might be used for something to like, you know, initiate discussion to see who agrees with what statements and things like that. Um, so in that case, uh, it's very pretty straightforward. But the other use of it is actually for quizzing. And um, in some cases, we have very large courses with 100 plus students. And 
of so oftentimes the, uh, the teams of faculty will want to be able to quiz the students on things like reading comprehension or, uh, you know, the readings they did the previous night. And it's difficult to obviously grade for a uh, hundred plus students when you have these quick quizzes at the beginning of class. So the clicker system or the reef system has been a good way to have that right at the beginning of class and then to auto grade those submissions and to store them. So I'm going to start off by talking about the iClicker system, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, as you can um, see here, so basically the iClicker system is made up of um, a couple of different parts. So this is this clicker that the students get, which allows them to respond. Um, we plug this base station into the classroom computer along with a thumb drive, which holds the iClicker software and the iGrader software. And then instructors can actually control the sessions and start and stop them with the blue clicker. So these are pretty much all the pieces of equipment that are required in order to do the polling systems with this hardware. Um, so basically, when once everything is set up, the professor is able to start a polling session and you can actually see the live polling data if you'd like to open a window such as this. And so students can see as they click in who's responding to what. Obviously, when it's being used for quizzing, they're not going to want to show what students are answering. So oftentimes I'll uh, observe that faculty members will ask, a, ask the questions, have the students do, you know, five or six reading comprehension questions at the start of class. And then afterwards, they'll go through one at a time um, and they'll review the questions and how the students responded. And they really just have to um, click on the correct answer. And that will actually store the information in the iGrader. So it's really simple. Uh, it allows them to review what was the correct answer, see how well students did on it, see if there was some confusion and if that question needs to be addressed with more detail. And then just click on that right one and it will record the grade for who got that right and who got that wrong into the iGrader system. So this is what iGrader looks like. As you can see, it tracks the student information and then it has session data. So as a semester went on, you would continue to see sessions build here and that information would continue to develop and be stored. Um, it can so store the average and it can also store individual session data. Um, so that's just sort of an overview of what the iGrader, I mean, iClicker looks like and, and the basic functions. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how the process we use in order to get the iClicker set up and then to get that to sync with Sakai. So the first step is that you need to obviously download the roster from Sakai. Um, typically, you know, that gets downloaded into, you know, an Excel document. And then that needs to be reformatted as a text file and stored in the course folder for the iClicker software. So it's relatively simple, but you do need to follow a specific uh, format, as you can see here. So here they, this is the example they give, last name, first name, and then username. What's important to remember here is that the username needs to be the same username that they have in Sakai. Otherwise, it's not going to know how to match the iGrader information to Gradebook 2 once it's imported. So again, that's why it makes sense to first download the roster from Sakai before you put it into this format. Um, a roll call registration uh, can be done at the start of the semester, and that will associate the student IDs with the iClicker. So basically, all the students are given their clickers, and then they'll see come up on the screen their username, and next to it, there will be a couple of letters like A, B, or D, C, and they will click those letters into the clicker, and then it will uh, pair that clicker with the student's ID for the remainder of the semester. Um, students can also register their own clickers, um, but there is a $10 fee associated with it. So the roll call registration is the way we've been going about doing it. Of course, the difficult part about that is that if you have a class of 100 students, sometimes it can be a bit time consuming to try to make sure they're all paying attention and get those, those letters in to pair their name to the clicker. 
um, but it seems to be working overall. Um, once the iClicker software is set up to assign points to student responses, it automatically tracks the grading in the iGrader. So you can decide how much uh, you know correct response is worth um, and set that for the semester or set that by session. And it will just grade it automatically based on whether they got it right or wrong and store that information from you, from you into iGrader. So then the last step is getting that data from iGrader to Sakai. So what we do is we have the instructors, um, I train the instructors to export the session data as a CSV file, and then they upload that into Gradebook too. So it's, it's really just a two-step process. Once it's been done you know, a couple times, they tend to get a hang of it and it's pretty easy. And of course, once it's in Gradebook too, they can manipulate that data further. So if they wanna you know, assign as, uh, um, make all, you know, um, ungraded be zeros, then that's a quick way for them to, you know, give zeros to students who weren't present in class that day. Um, and or if they want to change the point system or if they want to put it into a weighted category, it's, it's easy to manipulate it once the file's in there. Um, apparently it can, uh, iGrader can also be synced as an LTI or iClickers can be synced as an LTI to Sakai. So that should be just a one click thing so you can actually see um you can see the button here where there's a sync option and this says moodle but it would be sakai obviously um we have not developed that it's when we looked into it it was a little more complicated than uh, than some ltis like reef which i'll talk about momentarily um but if anyone has had success with it i would definitely be interested to hear about that at the end of the session So some pros and cons. Um, some pros about the iClicker system is one, the graphical display for live polling, which is great as I showed before, it's just a, a bar graph. And um, it can be really cool when you're doing something like a, some sort of study game or just kind of trying to start some live de you know, debate where you can have people you know, entering and you can see on the screen right away you know, uh, what the audience response is to certain things. Um, it also collects individual session data, which makes it good for quizzing. So as opposed to a system like Poll Everywhere, where, yes, I can see a live poll and I can see how people felt and I can survey them in live time in uh, real time. I can't capture individual, or at least as far as I know, it can't capture individual session data for grading. So it does, it's not useful for quizzing, but iClicker is a very good quiz tool. And last, the process of importing the data for, to Gradebook 2 is relatively simple. Like I said, I mean, there is that two steps, those two steps you have to download the uh, CSV file and then upload it back into Sakai. Um, but it isn't uh, too difficult. And once you've done, I found that once faculty have done it a couple times, uh, they seem to be good with it for the remainder of the time they use the system. So some cons about it. The first one is obviously the hardware costs. So um, a little background about the iClickers is that uh, this was a technology that you know I inherited when I got the position. So there actually were about 500 iClickers and 15 base stations that had been purchased. I know a lot of campuses uh, pass the cost on to the student, but the student has to buy the iClicker to participate in the course. Um, they are $52 per clicker. So it was really great that they that we have this this storage of um, clickers that the students can let, uh, be lent for the semester. Of course, the downside is the time that it takes to keep up with that hardware, because as you can imagine, um, clickers get lost or the base station can get damaged and different things like that. So there, there can be a lot of um, upkeep trying to uh, keep up with um, the hardware itself. The other thing is that the iClicker software, we've been experiencing increasing glitches with it, especially this semester. Um, as an example, when we went to do that roll call registration I, I described earlier, um, in a couple classes, the information didn't sync to the student clicker. So we ended up wasting about 10 to 15 minutes at the beginning of a class, having the students think that they were, you know, uh, registering their clickers. And instead, uh, the, the data never um, was was attached to that clicker or to that student ID. Um, so I had to go through and actually uh, choose to use an older version of iClicker that had been more successful rather than the new version for some reason. So we've been running into little things like that with it that can be um, frustrating. 
And I mean, part of that might be that um, iClicker has been developing Reef, so they haven't been developing their software for the, the, the iClicker system as rigorously. And um, I'll talk more about Reef in a moment. Um, the last, uh, another thing is that uh, iClicker lacks the automatic synchronizations of the sky. Again, it is an option to be there, but it seemed like it was a very uh, involved process. So um, you can't just, you know, it's not just a one button click sync. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically the iClickers. Um, so, so Terry, I mean, sorry, not Terry, <laughs> Shauna. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at Terry's name in the chat. Um, uh, Terry had a couple of questions, um, and so I, I wondered if this would be an okay time to um, ask those, or do you want to wait till the end? Uh, no, that's perfect, yeah. Okay, so uh, she wanted to know, do you know how the importing works with the Sakai 11 gradebook in G for the grade data? Um, I haven't actually, um, we, we have the Sakai 11 um, test up, but I haven't actually uh, tested it out yet. It's a good question. I, um, I have been dealing so much with just trying to get it working in Sakai 10 <laughs> that I haven't had any, uh, I haven't had the chance to look at Sakai 11, but that is a really good question. I would like to, um, uh, to test that out this semester. Yeah. I think the assumption is that it should be pretty straightforward and, and not much different, but, um, but it is definitely something worth testing. We're using iClicker at the University of Virginia also, so we'll need to test that as well. And then her second question was, how is iClicker with tech support? Um, I would say um, spotty. Um, I, some, it depends. I, so I, I had to put in a few requests over the past semester, especially with the software issues. And in some cases, I got very quick responses that were really comprehensive and solved the problem immediately, which is great. And in other cases, I had to keep pounding them and they didn't. And then in the end, they didn't end up solving the problem and I had to just restart and um, and as I said I actually ended up going back to an older version of the iClicker software because we we're having so many problems with the the newer the newer version um, so so I mean yeah I would say spotty <laughs> okay all right thanks and uh, so I think that's it for now so you can okay go ahead thank you Great, thank you. Um, so I'll go on to talk about Reef. Um, Reef is being developed by, um, is also being developed by um, iClicker, because as you can see here, um, but it's their mobile polling system. So students are able to respond to questions from any device that's connected to the internet. Um, so they can use a tablet, a smartphone, a laptop, an iPad, whatever. Um, and there is actually an option also to integrate the iClicker to remotes with the system so that if there are students who don't have a mobile device, we would still be able to lend them the, the iClickers and set up the base station. It would still sync the information into Reef Polling. However, uh, we didn't really need to do that because as we found, at least in the pilot, that um, every student had a smartphone or mobile device of some kind. Um, and in the case that that there was an you know student didn't have one or there was an emergency where theirs was dead or wasn't working we actually um at the library we had set aside some ipads that could be taken out for the course uh, uh during the course session um that we had loaded the reef polling apps onto so it was a pretty easy workaround for a back background a uh, backup option um so how reef polling works is students need to sign up for an account and they need to download the app to whatever device they're using um, if it's a mobile device. If they're actually logging in through, say, a laptop, they can actually just log in through the browser. The first 14 days are free for students to use, but then it's $15 for six months, and then they have other pay options like a year or lifetime um, that become cheaper you know, for, per time as you go up. Um, I found yesterday when I looked, and this was new to me anyways, was that uh, they have enterprise licensing now. So if it was something that you thought that might be used extensively on your campus, that would be an option so that the students wouldn't be having to pay uh, every time they have a course that uses this program. And it's free for instructors to use. So when a student uh, goes to take a poll, say, um, uh, this is kind of the view of, of what it would look like on a smartphone. 
they can actually see the instructor's screen on their device. So the instructor is able to screen share. Um, so this is actually a pretty cool feature of it, especially when you have, as I described earlier, a class with you know more than 100 students sitting in a large room. Uh, it can be difficult for them to sometimes read that question or you know see the small details of something like a diagram. So they can actually see it right on their device and then they can respond to the multiple choice uh, options right from their phone and it will send it just like an eye clicker would, uh, but instead it's using whatever uh, internet connected device they chose. Um, another interesting feature of Reef is that it actually scores the session history. So if the professor had finished going through, you know, the quiz was ended and then they went through and as they normally do, they said, OK, let's, you know, here's question one. Uh, the correct answer was C. And then they will select that so that the session data will be recorded and graded. Um, but the student will also be able to keep a record of that so they can see which ones that they got right, which ones they got wrong. And, and then the actual question itself, they have a screen capture of the, um, the instructor's screen. So it can be used as a sort of study guide, which is a cool feature that obviously isn't available with something like iClickers. Um, so how Reef works with Sakai. Um, it had a very easy to set up LTI overall. It was really easy to get it to sync with Sakai, but during the time that we did the pilot, which was, I forgot to say this, but the pilot was done in the um, of spring or earlier this year. We haven't been running it currently this fall um, because they're in the process of, of making some changes, which I'll discuss in a, in a moment um, because there were some things that really didn't fit well for us. But um, during the time of the pilot, it was only pushing the student's average to Sakai, which meant that individual session data was unavailable for students. So, um, you know, if you decided you wanted to drop the two lowest quizzes, you couldn't do that because it's just the average. Um, if you wanted to, you know, tweak a grade or, uh, you know, delete a question, um, there was no way to, to, to do that with the, to manipulate the data that way if you use the LTI. The workaround was this very same as iClicker where you could download the results as a CSV file in Sakai format. And actually that is an option. When you go to download it, you can choose if you want it to be in um, like Moodle or Canvas or Sakai format. And it will put it into the right format to be uploaded into Gradebook too. So that was actually pretty simple. Um, but again, it's just a, a two-step process. And obviously like one click integration is, is always ideal. Um, so that was one thing with uh, Reef and Sakai. Um, so some pros and cons that we found with this, um, first is the BYOD, bring your own device, so replacing the hardware with mobile devices was, you know, nice not having to keep stored all those devices, worry about fixing them and, um, yeah, uh, th things getting lost and things like that. Um, the LTI, as I mentioned before, was easy to set up, even though it didn't really do everything we wanted it to. Um, the full session data could be exported from Reef and imported to Sakai with relative ease, as I mentioned. And students were able to see the questions and the slides right on their device, which was great. Uh, again, so if you're in a large classroom, it makes it a lot easier to see. And um, it's also great because it stores those slides as an image in their phone and tells them which questions they got right and wrong. So they can use that to review session data and to study. So some cons uh, was that, of course, there were glitches in the app at different times. Um, it, when we were doing it uh, in the spring semester, it was, um, you know, still it's still currently in development, but it was certainly at a, a much earlier stage of development at that time. So they were they were doing. They, I did. I want to say they did maybe two updates in the middle of the semester, which is a bit distracting because you know every student on their individual device needs to make sure that they've updated their app to the most recent version. Um, the other issue with this is that obviously uh, when you have a BYOD sort of uh, polling system, you have uh, all kinds of different operating systems and devices. So trying to troubleshoot that could be a bit difficult. Um, I would say that their tech support on Reef was actually a lot quicker than iClicker in my experience, but even still uh, it was difficult to know what was you know, an issue of the software itself or the app itself and what was an issue of the fact that the student hadn't updated their operating system in two years or what have you. Um, the 
uh, LTI, as I mentioned before, didn't push individual session data to Sakai, which made it kind of useless for us. Um, so we had to do that workaround, as mentioned. And students, uh, this was a this was a big one that I hadn't thought of initially, is that because there's the screen share, students were able to log into Reef Polling from any location, and then go ahead and take the quiz, which a lot of faculty use the polling system as basically a system for attendance and participation. So if a student decided not to come into class and is just laying in their dorm and logs into reef polling, they were able to take the quiz and the professor wouldn't know otherwise. So the option was to, you know, disable screen share, but then that takes away these, um, you know, these other two facets of it that were really great about reef. So um, last I had heard that they were in development of finding a way, uh, they're putting it uh, basically so that it's local, so that students uh, aren't able to log in unless they're within a certain distance of where the um, the poll is launched from. So I don't know if that's come out yet, but uh, that'll obviously be a, a nice fix to that issue. Um, so that's basically it. I, if anyone has any questions, and also I'm curious to know if anyone um, on the call uses any different audience response systems and how well those sync with Sakai. Um, we're always interested in possibly looking at other systems. Hey guys, sorry about that. I disconnected my phone by accident. No Can problem. you hear me? Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, looks like we, we had a conversation going on a little bit while you were talking. And um, so Linda was commenting that they are using a paid version of Poll Everywhere. Um, and she says that if you have your students register, you can run a report and get grades for any quizzes. And I assume, Linda, then you can import those into your Sakai gradebook. Is that right? Right, gives you a CSV file. So that's another uh, system. Um, and uh, so then. Jennifer is asking, were there, were there concerns with the mobile platform with cheating, especially if questions were saved on the device? Um, I mean, we only piloted it with a couple of classes so far. It's a good question. I, you know, one of the professors did turn the screen share off so that, um, so that, well, for one, so that students couldn't take it from, from, from home. But I think in his case, in, in the case of both the classes that piloted it, it was only one course section that they were using the quizzes for. Now, obviously, the downside is, you know, even if that is the case for the next semester, they're going to have to change up the questions um, in case the student, you know, has saved that data to share with another student for the correct and incorrect responses. Um, we haven't we hadn't run into any cheating issue, issues with cheating, but I can definitely see how that could be a concern unless you're going to make your quizzes different for each course section, which seems like a lot of work. Right. Yeah, that I could see where that would be be a could be a concern, um, and probably would be. Um, so I'm curious to know from the group here if if any other schools are using iClicker or Reef. I guess you could just comment in the chat. So Jennifer says they're using Turning Technologies Cloud at Walsh, which integrates well with Sakai. And Dave comments that he's played with Reef. Um, David, have you guys done any pilot? We don't have widespread use, he says. No, no pilot. So just, just sort of locally among your 
um, colleagues. Okay, and his own course. So anyone else using uh, any kind of polling um, capabilities? I mentioned at the University of Virginia, we're using iClicker also. And I don't know, I don't think we're using uh, Reef at all, but I'm going to ask uh, the person who sort of supports that. And Linda notes that they've used Poll Everywhere at their first faculty conference, and this spiked interest in it among more faculty. And so many more faculty are now using it. It was a slow adoption initially. So yeah, that's a great idea. Adam says they had some experiences with turning tech prior to their iClicker adoption. So it looks like we've got quite a few iClicker schools here. Uh, found that the turning folks were slow to update software. Um, is, that, is that what you meant, Adam? Turning, not iClicker, right? Sorry, yes, Turning Technologies was very slow to update their PowerPoint plugins. Gotcha. And he asked a question, is Turning Technologies cloud platform agnostic and does it support mobile? Does anybody know? I do not. So Shauna, go ahead and come on the mic if you want to go ahead and respond to Terry. Oh, yeah, sure. I was uh, just saying that uh, uh, Reef definitely has a sense that it is being developed um, in a lot of ways for online courses, uh, just because it, it kind of bridges some of that um, that distance learning, you know, gap where uh, right. students feel isolated, um, and it's being developed in a lot of ways. It could, I get the sense that it's being developed in a lot of ways, at really for online use. But uh, we don't have a huge number of online courses here, so there hasn't been a lot of um, demand for it. There has been no demand for it yet, but um, maybe that'll change. Yeah, but I can imagine students are happy they don't have to buy yet another device to use Reef. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think with Reef, uh, you know, with Reef, I think it would be a pretty simple uh, online option because, yeah, they just have to, well, the students would have to purchase, you know, uh, register to register, but they would be able to just um, take the polls from right within their browser. So if you were having, you know, a live course, um, you could have that. Uh, in a live uh, online course session. Of course, that's always a difficult thing um, because depending on where your students are, having a set time for something can be a struggle. Yeah. So I just, for the recording, I want to capture some of the commentary that's happening in the chat. So Jennifer has responded to Adam that Turning does have a mobile platform. So thanks for that. And it's working with Office 2016. Uh, Linda notes that um, faculty who are using training technologies um, have switched to Poll Everywhere at their school because of the cost. And, however, some of the physics faculty who are staying with the hardware are staying with the hardware because they don't want students distracted by their mobile devices. <laughs> well, that's an interesting uh, perspective, yeah. So Dave says, I think that is nice not having to buy a device uh, between bring your own device and having to buy a device for cheap or using a browser. And Reef, Terry is asking, Reef still needs a hub base. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. So is there a main device in the classroom for using Oh, Reef? no, it's all online. So uh, that's why it needs to be an internet uh, connected device um, because yeah, it uh, it connects to uh, the to the internet. Um, so yeah, that that it doesn't need uh, it doesn't need a hover base now. Unless you're using the iClickers to sync with it, in that case you do. Oh, uh, but okay. if you're just using all BYOD devices then um, yeah. then yeah, no, it just they just log in online. So you can combine those. That's interesting. 
if yes. you've already got clickers, you might as well use them, I suppose. Yeah, it is interesting uh, feature. I mean, I, I, you know, I actually kind of thought it might be a little more used, but it, every student pretty much has a smartphone, so it didn't really seem to be a huge need for it. Right, exactly. Uh, let's see, Jennifer comments back to Linda that same in issues where with mobile de devices, many of the faculty at Walsh are still using hard, hardware clickers. And uh, Dave, res uh, Linda responds to Dave, um, still have faculty who don't don't want students using their mobile devices in class and actually ban them. Dave comments that Reef is just use of an internet connected device and BYOD could be a phone or a laptop or an iPad. So that's true. Um, that might overcome faculty concerns or it might open up more concerns. Hard to say. But this is fascinating, and I'm also curious about the, um, are, are there any accessibility issues with either of these systems for students with disabilities or faculty for disabilities? Does anybody know if, if these products are um, considered accessible? Um, as far as Reef goes, I'm I'm not actually sure. I, I hadn't really looked into it. I mean, obviously, uh, it, I mean, I believe the app provides as much uh, any, like screen reading and anything like that necessary, mm -hmm. but but I haven't really delved into it too deeply. Right, right. It's you know, it's a question I have to ask for our own school because um, we're already using iClicker and um, our school and our administration are really focused on um, meeting accessibility um, legal requirements. So uh, it becomes a really important question these days. Um, Dave asked if any novel uses of these face-to-face -face classes in order to keep focus on the learning and not on distraction. So yeah, as a method for um, keeping the students engaged, I guess. Does anybody know of any um, interesting ways faculty might be using these devices in that regard? Um, I don't know so much about the uh, the mobile devices. Um, I know with the eye clickers, a lot of times they're used just to, you know, as I talked about, kind of just like live polling, but not actually like recording session data. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times they will, uh, you know, kind of use them to, to just kind of gauge the audience and, and kind of, organize a discussion. Um, I've seen the iClickers use that way. From the pilot we did with Reef, um, some feedback I got is that it is very difficult to keep the, the devices from being distracting. So, I mean, it was just a simple simple rule in the class where uh, the instructor was, you know, your phone has to be face down, you know, at the edge of your desk unless it's a quiz and then you can pick it up. But they wouldn't let them, uh, they actually had to be visibly face down at the edge of the desk so they knew they weren't texting under their desk or whatever. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's an interesting like way to kind of work around that issue, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Louisa notes that they are using, or she has used Socrative, um, which she believes is accessible. I'm not sure. I have not heard of that. So that's another polling. Is that an online polling system, Louisa? Similar to Reef, or is that come with hardware? It's an app. Okay, gotcha. So on any device, gotcha. And Linda notes that she's not sure, I guess, is this in response to Dave, but I would think if you have a physical issue like inability to, oh, about accessibility, like an inability to use your hands, then it may be challenging. If students can text, they can participate, no audio capability that I know of. And so coming back around to the questions about any interesting uses to keep students engaged and not distracted, um, Dave suggests like an end of class pop quiz over the content or using exit tickets that are then used as attendance. So those are good good suggestions for, for uh, ensuring more, in, more engagement and attentiveness. Yes. 
Belinda notes that faculty can use them as an entering question as students are coming into class to get them starting to think about the talk topic. Yeah. Excellent, Excellent suggestions. Any other uh, thoughts or comments on polls similar to iClicker or any polling tools that um, would be worth capturing in the call? Well, thank you, Shauna, for your presentation. It's really um, generated a lot of good conversation and questions around this topic, and I think um, it's got us all thinking about um, using these tools more effectively and helping vendors understand the issues so that they can uh, develop their tools to be more effective for all of us. Yes, yes, it's a great way to probe thoughts about sensitive topics and class. Oh, yeah, that's really true, Linda. Good point about sensitive topics um, because the responses can be anonymous. Um, so that said, Shauna, uh, we're really glad that, that you volunteered to um, present on this topic today. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah, thank you. And thank you for everyone for the uh, feedback. It's interesting to hear what other people are doing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so that um, will segue into just taking a look at um, upcoming meetings. Um, so November 2nd, again, that's the same date as Sakai Virtual Conference. So hopefully we'll all be attending or presenting um, at that. And on November 16th, I've tentatively um, communicated with Adam Marshall and Lucy Talents about uh, they want to present on their show project, which is um, reusable learning nuggets in Sakai. Um, and so hopefully we can get them scheduled on November 16th. That sounds really interesting. Um, and if any of you have uh, topics that you would like to present, please let me know or any of, of the facilitators, Matt Burgess or Neil, because um, uh, you know we're always looking for people to um, talk about interesting things that they're doing and um, we would love to get you scheduled uh, in December if possible. Any other comments or questions or thoughts before we adjourn? Uh, Jennifer asked if the video from the 5th has been posted yet. Um, Jennifer, if you don't see it on the um, Aperio Teaching and Learning Call site, and let me paste that URL in for you, um, that probably means that Neil hasn't had a chance to um, get it up yet, but I will remind him and ask him if, if he could get that up. So Terry suggests, how about a topic in December on what you might have missed in the virtual, oh, wow, <laughs> that's a great idea. Maybe some repeat presentations from that. Oh my gosh, there are gonna be so many. Um, that's a really great idea, Terry. Um, so I will ask all of you who are at the conference to um, suggest people who could, repre uh, sorry, who could represent their topic at one of our meetings. Um, we could have a lightning. Oh, that's even better. That's a great idea. So we'll work on that. Excellent suggestions to have a lightning recap from the virtual conference. And maybe if any of the topics, you know, if we want to delve deeper, we can, we can have a full um, presentation on on some of those so I think those are great suggestions thank you so much I'm going to make a note of that right now all right well thanks everybody we're, we're done a little early so hopefully um, that uh, is helpful to all of you and I appreciate your engagement in the in the conversation so i look forward to seeing most of you i hope at the virtual conference and later on the 16th of november